All praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakakwadash, double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, Shalom, salutations to the hopeful elect that's fighting the good fight of faith and truth and sincerity and wholeheartedly, and Shalom to the Aqwa, which is the women believers, Shalom unto you. And it said, For unto us a child is born, <clears throat> unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty Power, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. So, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. You know, even though we in so-called 2022, you still got people wondering, are we the Israelites? And wondering if the Lord just for the Israelites. So this is going to be a real basic lesson, but it have to be taught because you still have people out here who've been indoctrinated with God love everybody. So even though it's plethora of scripture, uh, scriptures on this, I'm just going to hit the ones that I like just to get straight to the point. So. I remember one time this man came up to me and he said, wait a minute, because, you know, Christianity, it talks about the God, you know, the father and the son are the same people or the same person. I mean, so I was like, no, that's not the case. So he brought this scripture out. The end of the scripture said the everlasting father, the prince of peace. But see, that's why you got to know the meaning of words, because one of the definitions of father is the creator, an inventor or an author of something. So the scripture said that, lo, I come in the volume of the book is written of me. That's a that's an author right there. An author is also a person who makes or create a thing through Yahweh. He made everything that you see. So that's what Christianity and Christians don't understand that he was the first spirit created and through that spirit made everything that you see. So that's a little off the subject because I just want to talk about how for unto us, a child is born unto us, a son is given. But people got to understand that when Yahweh came on the scene, the Lord have rejected us. So we needed a mediator. Matter of fact, let's get this and come back. Now, he already rejected the um, this, uh, northern kingdom. We get that in Ho Hosea 1. But let's continue. Jeremiah 3 and 8. And I saw when for all the curses whereby backsliding Israel commit committed adultery. Talk about the northern kingdom. I have put her away. I have given her a bill of divorce. Yet her treacherous sister Judah feared not, but went and played the harlot also. So the scriptures also say that when you offend in one, you offend in all. So he totally cast out the northern kingdom. And Judah disannulled the covenant. So all of Israel disannulled the covenant. But he actually cast away the northern kingdom. And through, we broke the contract, talking about uh, the southern kingdom, Judah, Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. They broke the covenant. So they got divorced too. That's why we needed a mediator. Now, the thing is, is that when it comes to the covenant, as it say in the curses, if you do all that the Lord say, you'll be blessed. If you do what he don't say, you're going to be cursed. So this is the reason when Yahweh came on the scene, he came under the Roman Empire with his people in subjection. And what he done on the cross was to reconcile us back to the father and that we could have the Holy Spirit in this time. Because guess what? Prophecy still had to play out. 70 AD ain't even come yet when the Lord died. That was coming, you know, about 40 years later. So the thing is, is that, um. The Lord have divorced us. And that's why this scripture, which everybody should know if you're a Hebrew Israelite, 
But you have false prophets out there. And it said, for there is one power and one mediator between the most high and man. And that man is a Mashiach Yahweh who gave himself a ransom for all to be justified, to be testified in due time. So, and another thing too. So a lot of people get confused with the all and all people and all nations. First of all, as curses said, we would be scattered into all nations. So guess what? You're going to be going into lands where Moabites is at. You know what I'm saying? I'm talking about in, in this time. You know what I'm saying? In that time, we were scattered in the known world all over the place. It said that Jews under every nation under heaven, Acts 2 and 5. So that means that you're going to have Israelites looking like a so-called Chinese, Japanese, Arab, all that. So you had to prophesy to all nations because by looking at a person, you can't tell if that's an Israelite. But that's a whole nother topic. But let's read seven now. Of the increase of his government, there should be peace. Oh, there. Oh, of the, uh, of the increase of his government and peace, there should be no end. And upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever the zeal of Yahweh of hosts will perform this so what Yahweh did Yahweh did not do what he did in vain now two thirds is going to get it they're going to feel it because the scripture said in Matthew 27 25 when they asked who you want to release Yahweh or Barabbas and they said you know, release Barabbas and let Yahweh Shah's blood be on us and our children. That's the reason that you see all these atrocities, especially to the northern, I mean, to the southern kingdom. That's why you see them getting shot down in the street like a dog. Because guess what? You are your children. Because you come back through the line of your children. So you got, you went into slavery, all right? Got hung, probably castrated, and your ass come back. And get shot down by the police or get thrown in prison or get shot up by another Jake. You know, scripture said that about the, the, the tongue. Matter of fact, what is that? I haven't read that in a while. Death and life are in the power of the tongue and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. And guess what? We've been eating the fruit thereof. So from here. I, this is like this is so plain and it's so funny this is why i understand what the lord said basically like when you're talking to a man to say when you when you perceive that there's no knowledge in his lips get away from him because all you're going to do is argue and it's going to be no edification because the one thing about it is that you could read this i'm about to read this real quick and it's so plain who he came for and then when we go to acts 5 and 30 matter of fact let me get that first and then come back So it said, the most high of our fathers raised up Yahweh Shai, whom you slew on hung on a tree. Him have the most high exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. Not the whole world. So Luke 1 and 68. Blessed be the Lord power of Israel, for he have visited and redeemed his people. So that's why you got to know, you know, the verbiage. You got to know what nouns are and pronouns are and possessive adjectives and possessive nouns. This is a possessive adjective right here. His people. All right. So it says. And he have raised a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant, David, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets. Remember, the book is all read about Yahweh Shai, man. Which have been since the world began. So when he came on the scene, he fulfilled everything that was written of him. That we should be saved from our enemies. That's it. That, that's now. That's this time. All right. We still had to go through things when Yahweh was on the scene. 70 AD still had to happen. We had to lose our heritage. Going to a land by a way of ships that we lost everything. We didn't know who we was after a generation died off. All right. Praising white Jesus and everything. We, we ain't go through that yet. So, 
You should save us from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us. Because when you go to Psalms 83, it ain't just Esau. It's all these nations. Esau just the head of the, of the heathen. All right. And it says to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. Who he give a covenant to? Psalms 147 and 19 and 20. All right. He spoke his word unto Jacob. In his covenant unto Israel, man. The oath which he swore unto our father Abraham. And guess who came out of Abraham? So Abraham had other kids, but he said that my covenant will be with Isaac. So Abraham, Isaac. Isaac had Jacob and Esau. The blessing went to Jacob. Jacob had 12 sons, and those are the Israelites today. Started with Abraham. So it said the oath which he swore to our father, our father Abraham, that he would grant unto us. See, it's so simple, man. That we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear. The in the in I mean in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. I don't have to break this down. This is straight to the this is straightforward. This is you can't get no straightforward than this. And you and thou child shall be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways. And guess what? He was a representation of the father on the earth. That's why he was able to be perfect. If the father would come down here, he would have came down here just like his son. All right. The, 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 that's why he had the power to actually. Uh, matter of fact, what did it say? Romans 8 and 3. I'm, I'm going to see if I can quote it real quick. Romans 8 and 3 said that he came down here in the likeness of sinful flesh and conquered it. You know what I'm saying? Only the father will be able to do something like that. Talk about the spirit that's in Yahweh Shah. He had the father's spirit in him the same way that we do. But we just don't have we don't have the full extent of it. But that's coming. We have a piece of it. I always look at it like that. You know, I always say like. The 144,000 have a piece of the father's spirit, man. But that's why we able to, you know, fight the flesh more times than not. We're not perfect. The flesh overcomes sometimes. But that's why we able to understand this truth and all that through Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah's spirit. So it says um, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people by the remission of their sins. So who? needed to get remissions of sins Israel though through the tender mercy of our our God whereby the day spring from on high have visited us that's Jehovah Shai because he is the morning star the bright and morning star as I say in Revelation 22 and 16 to to give light to them that sit in darkness in the shadow of death Woo! to give light to them that sit in darkness in the shadow of death. King David said that in Psalms 23. Though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I should not fear no evil. Because guess what? We are in the shadow of valley of death. This is a place where death just happened rampant. This is a this is a place where you could walk outside and somebody just stab you up, shoot you up, kidnap you. But the Lord said he gave us a light, which is this wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. He's he sprinkled down his Holy Spirit upon men, the remnant. Not everybody. So it said, and the child grew and waxed strong in the spirit and was in the desert till the day of the showing unto Israel. And that's talking about John the Baptist, because he's the one that usher in the Lord. But um, but that's the point, man. For unto us a child is born. All right. And unto us a son is given. That's what it's about. So Heathens got no part of this. No matter how much you argue, you calling the Lord a liar. The word said what it says, and you cannot put your emotional twist to it because you're adding to the word. And Revelation 22 said, if you add to the word or take away from the word, the plagues of this book will be added unto you. Shalom.